Summer is often the time parents want kids to take more responsibility. You know, you're home, you need to do more. Which brings up the question, should you tie an allowance to chores, you know, work for the money? Well, Steve Siebold is a financial expert and he wrote this book, How Money Works, Stop Being a Sucker. And he's here today now with some advice for parents. The sucker thing kind of threw me off when I saw that, Steve. It's like, that's very cute. <laughs> well, yeah, most of us end up being suckers with money because we're not taught how money works in school. Right. And so being a sucker means you're good, probably going to get, you're going to lose money because you're going to get, you're going to get messed up about it. Absolutely. The financial industry is very predatory and banks and uh, they take advantage of the public, no question. So we have to start, we have to help our kids when they're young. And we wish we all would have had this kind of training, Steve. Um, but when you're a parent, should you pay your kids to work? Tell me about that. Well, I mean, it depends on your philosophy, but I think it, it would be great to be able to pay them for basic chores that you think are outside of, uh, of the chores that they do so they can sleep inside instead of outside and, uh, and assign a monetary value to each chore so they start to understand how the economic system works in, in a free market where sure. there's a monetary value attached to labor or the solving of a problem. Okay, well, well, good. That is, your, I know your first point about um, teaching them the, a big lesson about money is that it um, it comes with solving problems, not from being entitled to money. It's like I love you, you're my kid. Here's money. That would be entitlement, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of people out there that are the kids that uh, are now grown up walking around thinking that uh, you know the world or the government or someone owes them something. That entitlement mentality, and of course they're they're gonna. They're in for a hard lesson. So, I yeah. mean, I think if you can prepare kids when they're young, I mean, when they're 8, 9, 10 years old, and just show them how the system works, they're really going to have a leg up when they go out into the real world. So that, that system for children is that they're going to do things around the house that, that help the whole family. It's that, um, you know, it's that unity concept, right? Absolutely, right. Have them mow the yard, wash the dog, wash the car, you know, sweep the driveway, with sweep the garage, you know, whatever it is. And and assign a monetary value to it. If you pay them for it, great. If you don't, just say this is what it would be worth in the free market if we had someone come in and mow the lawn. Oh, that's a that's a neat thing, especially these days. Find out the going rate for mowing lawns, and um, and then maybe and then set set a price for each thing. You think so? Tell me about that. Aren't there just some things kids should do around the house and not expect to get paid for it? If they want to sleep inside and they want to eat your food, I think they probably ought to do some things definitely. <laughs> so yeah. that's for sure. You know, otherwise you got to kick them out and make them sleep in the tents outside until they do their chores. But yeah. you know, beyond that, yeah, maybe find out what it what the going rate is for for mowing the lawn. And if it's a hundred dollars, you know, tell them, hey, I'll give you eighty bucks. And uh, if you if you if you want to get a hundred, then go mow the neighbor's lawn. Maybe they'll give you a hundred. <laughs> huh? Okay. <laughs> Well, I know you want to, you, you tell us we have to be consistent with this because let's say, you know, the kid has a list of chores for this week and he doesn't do two of them. Then you should, uh, the allowance should reflect that. Cut their pay, Paula, cut their pay, just like what happened at a job, right? You got you to show them how it works out there. I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm kind of half joking, but it really is true because that's the way we all know it works out there. If you don't show up, you don't do the work, you don't get paid. That is that I think that's brilliant stuff. But do you think is that is that a popular opinion these days, Steve? When you when you give these ideas to some folks, they go, oh, I don't know. Maybe that's attaching the wrong meaning to money for kids. Yeah, there are some people that push back like that. And you know, on a regular I hear that on a daily basis. People say, Oh, well, you know, they're just kids and the thing is, is that, you know, you're sending them out into the, the, the mean, cruel world and you don't want them to get slapped in the face with, with reality. I mean, why not prepare them? I mean, most of us were not prepared, including me, but uh, why not prepare your kids? And, and, and so they're not surprised when they get out there. Right. And I think the other thing, I think money can be mysterious to kids and they don't realize until they have that first job and they're out and they see the taxes that come out of their checks before they realize what it means to really be in the world. We can prepare them much earlier. It would really help that we all wish we had that. Yeah, right. Who's this FICO guy? Why is he taking all my money? I mean, right. Is, you right. Know, it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's yeah, it, exactly right. I mean, if you prepare them and show them, you know, uh, you know how it actually works, I mean, and, and paying taxes, tell them about the tax system and whatnot, and show them in a free market economy, um, you know, this is, this, is the way it, this is the way it works. When you solve a problem, you make money. And when you solve a bigger problem, you make more money. The bigger problem you solve, the more money you get paid. And also, this does take some effort on the part of parents. 
And I think sometimes we just feel too busy ourselves to, you know, to set this list of uh, chore prices. And, um, but that's part of being a, a good responsible parent, bottom line, right? Absolutely, right. Find out what the going rate is on, on basic chores. And if not, you know, kind of make it up a little bit if you have to. But have a, I would have a list, a, a spreadsheet good. of all the different chores and then what the, the current value of doing that work is on, you know, for money. And uh, and then show them and teach them, make it a learning a learning uh, you know event along the way. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect way to look at it. Uh, how money works? Stop being a sucker. Can a book about money change lives? Well, Steve Siebold would say uh, it's changed a lot of lives since he wrote that book. Steve, I know you're making an impact. Now, I, I, I we wanted to talk to you today about, especially this summertime. I think uh, parents were saying they want their kids to do more because they're home more, and um, maybe this was a good uh, launch point for a lot of families today. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Paula. Good having you along.